most of Nebraska's corn crop is faring summer well. Nearly three quarters is rated good to excellent, according to the latest USDA progress report. But you wouldn't know it by looking at one of Tom Hunt's research plots near Concord. Severe rootworm damage caused severe damage and reinforced why many farmers use resistant technologies or treatments. We talked with Tom Monday to get an update on aphids and soybeans and learn about corn rootworm pressure in his test plots. This year was one of the highest rootworm pressure in our studies and trap crops we've had in a few years. Um, it just goes to show you can have a couple years where you don't see much pressure and then boom you have pressure. Is there a reason for that? Um, yes, uh, we do plant a trap crop uh, which, which can mimic some farmers fields. Generally those are late planted or late maturing varieties of corn and plus possibly weeds. Last year it was so rainy our weed control wasn't very good in the trap crop and we planted late maturing corn and so those rootworm beetles love pollen. They love you know, late maturing corn pollen, they love weed pollen, and if those weeds are in the corn, they stay right there and lay loads of eggs. So we had a, a large deposition of eggs, and then the weather was pretty good up here for, uh, it didn't get saturated so well, it rained a lot, so they survived. And what kind of damage did you see in those untreated areas? We saw, uh, first of all, when we did the root digs, we saw some uh, heavy damage to the roots, but also we saw extreme goosenecking and even flat corn. Um, goosenecking is when they eat the roots away so that it's loosely held so when the wind blows a little bit they fall over and then grow up again. And then some of the flat corn is when they got fairly tall without goosenecking. We had some very strong winds with very um, small root masses and they blew to the ground and then kind of the tips started growing up. So it was very severe damage because of the extreme rootworm injury and then the extreme winds that came along later. Comparatively, what about those that had resistance or were treated? The, we have a variety of different uh, either genetics that are transgenic or against rootworms or uh, insecticide uh, treatments. And uh, most of them did pretty well where, you know, the corn is still standing. There is some uh, lodging. When you have extreme pressure like this, um, even uh, some soil insecticides, there'll be some places where they, the, they'll get past it. It's kind of like uh, overwhelming numbers. So what does it tell you about the efficacy of these tools? It shows me that uh, the transgenics uh, in our fields work quite well, and if applied correctly, the, the soil insecticides are still protecting your corn pretty good too. Do farmers need to know anything about next year? You know, you said that they might not be there this year, but they could be there next year or in fields such as this? Yes, exactly. If this year was a year where with the rains are some late planted fields. Late planted fields will attract rootworm beetles later in the season when they're laying eggs because they're eating the pollen. And then if you had problems getting weed control in those fields, that'll even add to the problem of bringing in corn rootworm. So those later planted fields, late maturing fields, particularly if there's weeds, will be the fields that next year you really want to make sure you have a good rootworm management plan in. Let's move into soybeans. Have you been seeing many aphids in this area? Uh, we haven't seen large numbers of aphids, but there are aphids in every bean field I've been in at this time. They're at relatively low numbers, but they have been increasing. There was a storm with high winds that kind of knocked them back a little bit, kind of what blew over some corn too. Uh, but, uh, so, but they are in just about every field, so it's time for farmers to start scouting, keep scouting, check them once a week, use that 250 aphids per plant, plus you know populations growing threshold. Um, we might get through August without having to treat, but I, I imagine some fields will need treatment. Yeah, how deep in August do we go where we don't worry about treating anymore? Um, generally, the aphids leave the, the fields in early September. Um, and if you get into R6, once you hit R6, um, it takes many more aphids to cause the same amount of damage. Uh, we don't know the exact numbers, but I double the threshold of more like 500. Once you get to 6.5, you know that's you don't have any more problems with aphids so they'll but the thresholds of 250 per plant hold all the way through R5 and so I'd keep watching them all the way through August and maybe a little into September. On the Market Journal website we'll link to more information on scouting and treating soybean aphids.